Mark, I think there's a tendency for those of us who are inclined towards a listening ministry to be brave enough to at least try it. And sometimes it works. And other times, whether it's our approach or our um, lack of intimacy that might have been established in that group, whatever it is, it, it just falls flat. The energy in the room feels uncomfortable. Clearly the space has been interrupted with something. Can you speak to uh, some wisdom on what to do in those moments or what that feels like. Um, I'm getting at something that's intangible and a little tricky to describe, but hopefully it's making some sense. Well, you know, you know, so human beings are complex and, and, uh, and ministry is an art. So yeah, we go in with some really beautiful uh, idea for how we're going to be with kids that night. Like, okay, you know, we're going to start, I'm going to read this story then we're going to light a candle, then kids are going to pray in this certain way. And then I'm going to do this, you know, journaling exercise. And like you said, you go into the room, there's two new kids who have been forced to come and they're sitting there resentful and angry, or they're messing around a lot, or they won't get off their phones or whatever. And the whole thing, and instead of you being this sort of spiritual guide, you end up being, you know, a bitter grandmother, you know, you're, you're sort of just angry at them the whole time, you know, or, um, and so that happens all the time. And so, but the most important, you know, what I'm trying to do when I'm working with kids is I'm trying to be real. So, and, and I'm trying to find, to, to create a honest encounter with, with, with them. And so if the truth is, I've got three kids there who hate being there and they're, they're there against their own will. And, you know, is I might just speak that into the room. Hey, okay. So, so basically you guys were forced to be here. Oh man, I'm so sorry. Um, well, here's what we're going to do. Or I might decide, okay, I, I've got to shake this up and we've got to make some fun in the room, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, we're, I'm going to play a game or something else or, we're going to, let's go outside and do this walk. Or you know, what would you do if you had to spend this hour, not in this Sunday school classroom and you, and you're not at home asleep, what would you, you know, cause most of my kids would say, I wish I was just in bed. Okay. What, what, what would you like to do? I don't know. Go outside. Okay. Let's all go outside. Let's go see what happens. Okay. Now what do we want to do some way that I'm taking them seriously, that I'm shaking things up, that I'm trying to break them out of the conventional way they think of religion and the conventional way they think of adults and youth being together because they all are going through a school system that tells them I don't have any power what I think doesn't matter you know the adults are in charge and so there's this kind of uh shutting down that can happen yeah I've got to break that open in some way so it's like hey there's a coffee shop around the corner lattes on me or whatever you guys want let's go it's like really it's like, yeah, we'll make it back in time for your parents to get out of worship or whatever, or, you know, let's just go. And then I'm going to try to start asking them questions on the way. So what, why did your parents make, what do you think they thought were, was going to happen anyways? <laughs> I had to throw away my whole thing. And they're like, they're like, I seriously don't know. Like my parents, I guess they went to church as kids. They want me to experience that. What do you think they trying to get you to experience? I don't know. You know, I hate, I hate being here. I would too, you know, or whatever, you know, I'm yeah. finding some way to yeah. in, so you have to, you plan, what was it say? Like, um, you know, Ignatius of Loyola says, you know, you pray knowing that God is in charge of all things. You work as if it's all on your shoulders, <laughs> you know? So, so, you know, you try to plan really well, but then when you get in that room, you remember, okay, God's holding this. I can let go of my beautiful plans and what will create an honest interaction. Yeah, yeah. What I love about the shift you made, taking the kids to go get lattes or whatever, right? Yeah. Is that it's a it becomes a really genuine ministry of accompaniment. We we talk about that. That word gets bandied around a lot. That phrase gets gets thrown around. And I um, to go deeper in that question, it's okay. But what does accompaniment actually mean? And you were able in that example to accompany those kids who had no interest really in being there. Being right. like, all right, that's fine. I'm not going to force you to want to be here. Like, I'm not going to force you into this exercise. Let's go get coffee. And I, I love that. Um, 
to think of, okay, and it is, it's very much what Jesus did. Where is this person right now? What do they actually need? They don't need to sit around in a circle and light a candle. They need to perhaps just hear someone say, yeah, it doesn't, I don't know why you would want to be here either. <laughs> it's wonderful. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's a very tricky thing. I mean, yeah. I could see in another setting, I might think actually we do need to sit around, even though these kids are resistant, Yep. I need to, sh- I need to kind of disorient them with something that might, they might go, you know, like I say, okay, they, I let them stay on their phones, but I'm like, but, but we have this ritual we do. So you know, Tom, will you turn off the lights? And, you know, Carla, can you go get the candle? And they're kind of saying like, what's going on? It's like, yeah, come down. We all sit in a circle because I know like, this is going to stick a little bit. Like, mm. what the heck was that? Like, we all sat in the dark around a candle and everybody start told something intimate they want prayers for, you know, even though they stayed quiet, you know, so sometimes you, you go forward with something like that. Sometimes you go with them. It's, Yep. There's no science to it. You're right. And a lot of times you screw up, right? It's, yep. it's like, oh, that didn't work. And you try something the next week. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, but ritual, you know, to your point, ritual disrupts the narrative. It disrupts the like, oh, we don't want to be here. We're just going to mess around on our phones, whatever, whatever. It actually is like, ah, turn off lights, like yeah. candle. We're going to try something for a couple of minutes. Hang with me. You know? Yeah. We do this every week. Yep. Now. Yeah. What, in, a, in a situation like that, is the ritual real? Mm. You know, it, I mean, is it is it an actual uh, encounter, or is it just this rote thing that we do? Right. You know, and so that's where you know sometimes I've had to take kids and and protect them from church services <laughs> because because nobody's really present in this service because nobody actually likes what's happening because everybody's kind of half alive in the service, yep. and other times. It's, uh, I mean, I was at one church where it's like, we, I actually don't think it's good for the kids to be in Sunday school. This church service is so real and so honest and so alive. It, I think it'd be better for the kids to be there. It was actually my sons who told me that. My son was like, dad, you know, Sunday school is cool, but I like being in church because we had a pastor who was so, she was so transparent and she would engage, you know, allow questions or how many people here are struggling with an addiction, either you or some of your family right now stand up. And my sons would be like, oh my gosh, I had no idea. You know, so many people are hurting. And so, you know, you, you ha- it's an art to know when you sort of go with them and mm-hmm. when you, what are the, what are the hills you're going to die on? Yeah. You know, like in my family, dinner time, my kids resisted it almost every night. You know, like we're going to eat dinner at six, you know, because one kid's coming home from practice early and they're starving. Another kid's not coming home until 6.30, but it's like, we're going to wait till everybody's here and then we're going to have dinner time. Here's a little snack or whatever. But I knew this ritual is important, like that we're around the table, that we all get to hear how each other's day is going. And so I'm going to fight. I'm going to die on this hill, you know, but um, other ones I'm willing to give up. 